Hi everyone. Hi Facebook and Periscope, YouTube viewers. Got some kefir grains here and um, I'm going to talk about something that can happen to many of us. So you're culturing something, could be your kefir, it could be your sourdough, sourdough, it could be your starter or some dough. But anyway, you've got it in the oven, like with the pilot light to keep it warm, or you put it on top of the oven just to get some gentle heat going, and um, then you forget about it. And somebody uses the oven, somebody uses the stove, and so then you're like, ack! Oh no, what did I just do? Is my sourdough starter ruined? Are my kefir grains ruined? What do I do? Well, it does depend a little bit on the amount of heat. We're going to talk about kefir grains in particular today. Before we get to it though, let me welcome you to Ask Warty. This is the weekly show where I answer your questions about traditional cooking. If you're live on Facebook or Periscope right now, please um, know that Millie is there in the comments pasting links and answering your questions as we go along. And no matter where you are, where you're listening or watching, askwarty.tv, go there, look for episode 90, and you will see everything I'm gonna to share today. So it's like the transcript, the cheat sheet, it's just everything I'm gonna share. So if you're interrupted, don't have time to watch this, that's all there for you written out, and the recordings will be there later. Okay, so let's get to today's question. It comes from Janet M. She's actually asking on behalf of a friend. I love that, Janet. She says, I have a friend who started making her own kefir. She used to let her kefir ferment on her stovetop because it was warm. She forgot to take it off the stovetop while baking something in the oven and thinks it got too warm. The milk separated. After shaking it, it separated again and didn't taste right. She's wondering if the kefir grains can get too warm and kill the bacteria. Okay, so Janet, here's my answer. It does depend. So we're going to go through some scenario here. Um, when it's heated, and I have an example jar here, when kefir is heated, it does separate like your friend experienced because it's forced into curds and whey, and it may taste cheesy, it may not taste the same, it may taste um, just strong. Um, you pretty much cooked the milk and forced it into a separation of curds and whey like a cheese. And the grains that are in here culturing the kefir may have died because excessive heat does kill kefir grains just like it kills any other culture. Um, it is hard to know for sure what happened with your friend's grains though, Janet, because it was on the stove top, so it was experiencing the heat from the oven vent. So how hot did they get? We really don't know. If they had been in the oven, which many people have done, they put their cultures in the oven with just the pilot light, or, or it turned off if it's an electric because um, just the insulation keeps it warm. So many people have done that and then turned the oven on. If it had been in the oven, it's pretty much a sure bet <laughs> that they were dead um, if they sustained any kind of time in that heat because that would be excessive heat that would kill them. But hers were on top. So here's what I would suggest for Janet is to, for her to try making kefir again and see if they work. So, um, because we're really not sure if they got hot enough. And so you try making kefir again and you'd see, well, is the kefir any good? So if the kefir turns out good, then that's a pretty good sign. You also want to look at the grains behavior. So we know that healthy grains, and I'm going to talk about them in a little bit for people who aren't familiar, but they're just um, bouncy and full and they either maintain their shape and size or they will grow. So if you've got really healthy grains and milk and kefir going, you will just get more and more grains all the time. So if the kefir grains in the new batch um, either maintain or are growing and thriving, then they're probably fine because growth and thriving and making good kefir is a sign of them being still viable. If they're shriveling away and dying, not thriving, so they're basically just like decomposing and the kefir isn't turning out good, then they're ruined. They are dead. <laughs> the topic of today's Ask Wardy was, are they dead? Well, if that's the case, then yes, they are. They should be replaced. You cannot make kefir with them anymore. You can compost them. They won't go completely to waste, but you need new grains. So that is a pretty short answer. Pretty simple answer, but it's a pretty simple issue. Are living cultures like kefir grains, like sourdough, um, they, excessive heat kills them. They're meant to work like at room temperature or slightly, slightly warmer. So that's the answer, Janet. <laughs> and for anybody else who's wondering, have I killed my grains? Um, well, if it's excessive heat like the oven and it's sustained, almost always yes, 
is the answer, you need to replace them. Uh, if you're wondering where to get kefir grains, my favorite source is Cultures for Health. There's a link below this video or Millie's pasting it in the comments on Facebook. For anybody who's unfamiliar with this culturing, let's talk about kefir specifically in the kefir grains. So kefir. I say kefir, other people say kefir, other people yet say kefir. They're all right. Um, I've just said kefir as long as I've been introduced to it, so that's what I say and that's what you'll hear from me. What is it? Well, it is a fermented dairy and it's very similar to yogurt except that the mother culture, these grains, is a colony of bacteria and yeast. With yogurt, it's just bacteria, beneficial bacteria. And the end result of making kefir is a thinner, more sour, even more effervescent and bubbly um, ferment than yogurt. So a lot of people love it. They love that extra flavor, that extra bubbliness. Um, some people don't care for it, prefer yogurt. Those are the differences between kefir and yogurt. You can make kefir with raw or pasteurized milk, just like you can make yogurt with raw or pasteurized milk. And the way you're doing kefir really is you've got grains like this and you're plopping them into raw or pasteurized milk and leaving them to ferment for 24 to 48 hours, really depending on um, the time of year and how warm it is in the house until you get it thickened. And it is thinner than yogurt, but it does thicken. If it separates a little bit, you might see ribbons of yellow whey at the bottom or near the top. That's normal, that's a sign that it's done. Um, if it gets really warm, it goes too long, it will actually separate into curds and whey. So you have a thick layer of curds at the top and a layer of yellow whey at the bottom. It's all within the realm of culturing. So you ended up with more of a cheese. <laughs> and anyway, when it's done and you stop the culturing, you remove the grains like these, and you put them in a new batch of milk, you'd cover this and put it in the refrigerator and chill it. That's kefir, it's very, very simple. It's sim more simple than yogurt even, um, but we love and use both yogurt and kefir in our household. And in fact, if you would like a good yogurt recipe, I have a wonderful one for raw milk yogurt where there's no pasteurization step required. So it saves you a ton of time and you maintain the um, benefits of the raw milk's beneficial organisms because you don't have to pasteurize it, which is usually a step that's called for in yogurt recipes. If you'd like that recipe, it's at tradcookschool.com slash free yogurt. Free yogurt is all one word. Or just look for a link with this video. Um, let's just take a little bit of time and talk about kefir grains and what they are. I've been showing them to you, but let's talk a little bit more in depth. So it's um, rubbery, a little bit like cauliflower clumps. And if you can see, I've pulled off some stringiness, which is just cultured, just the finished milk that's thickened and cream that's around these grains. They don't have to be rinsed from batch to batch, but this is the mother culture. And it's a colony of um, beneficial organisms, both bacteria and yeast, that live together in this. You put them in milk and they, they, they eat the sugars in the milk and they produce acids, acids which then thicken the milk, and this is the beauty of it. And it's really a beautiful thing. And I currently have another, we have enough grains to do a couple half gallons of kefir at a time, and I have another quart that's just full of kefir grains because these are growing so well. <laughs> I got them locally, I'm thrilled. Um, they're wonderful, wonderful grains. So the bacteria and yeast are living in this like matrix of it's like, I mean, it's a little bit translucent. It's clumpy like cauliflower, but it's really rubbery. It's a beautiful thing, like I said. And in here, are uh, the, the culture varies. So you have strains of beneficial bacteria and yeast, and depending on who you ask is how many strains, but grains contain around 30 beneficial strains of bacteria and yeast. So it's a fantastic probiotic food. Many more probiotics than yogurt, another reason to eat kefir. If you're looking for grains, you want to check out Cultures for Health. That's my favorite online supplier. And you can find a link um, with this video or with this recording. I have some alt more links for you to share if you're interested in more information about kefir or culturing dairy. So AskWordy.tv, episode 90. Just scroll down to the helpful links section. Um, I have a past... Um, episode of Ask Wardy, what's the best cultured dairy for probiotics? Because you have kefir and you have yogurt and you have clabber, so I kind of compared them all. 
um, pros and cons of each. And it's not just a clear cut answer because you can look at the healthiest, but you also have to look at what's doable for you and your lifestyle and what you can keep up in the kitchen. So I help you make that decision. Um, I have at Traditional Cooking School, we have an entire course and an ebook package on culturing dairy, which includes kefir and lots of recipes around kefir, as well as yogurt and other cheeses, other cultured dairy-like cheeses. You can check that out. Um, I have instructions for how to make kefir if you're interested in making it for yourself. And as I mentioned earlier, we also have a free recipe for thick raw milk yogurt. The link for that is with this video or this recording. It's also at tradcookschool.com slash free yogurt, where yogurt is all one word. Free yogurt is all one word. <laughs> so pretty short and sweet today, isn't it? It's a simple thing. If you heat up these grains too much, they will die and need to be replaced. If you're unsure, you want to go ahead and make another batch and see if it turns out and see how those grains are acting to determine whether they're dead or not. Pretty simple. If you have a question for a future episode of Ask Wardy, I love them. All you have to do is go to askwardy.tv, choose any episode and follow the instructions at the bottom in the notes that tell you how to submit a question. You can also tweet me, use that hashtag Ask Wardy, and my handle is at tradcookschool. Thanks everyone for being here. Um, I have an announcement to make, which is that my family and I are gonna be taking a break, vacationing, and just taking some downtime. So the next two Wednesdays, there will be no Ask Wardy. Um, but come, well, let's see, that would be Wednesday, September 6th, and then Wednesday, September 13th. I'll be off, but the following Wednesday, which would be September, this is testing my math, September 20th, I believe, I will be back with another episode of Ask Wardy and we'll be doing um, an essential oil, essential oil roll-on that's really good for women's health and women's hormone issues. Somebody's asking for assistance with that, so I put together a blend that I'm gonna show you how to make in an essential oil uh, roll-on container. So I hope you'll join me again um, two weeks off, but then that would be Wednesday, September 20th. Come back for another episode of Ask Wardy. And while I'm gone, you can keep sending in questions. We'll add them to the queue and then we'll tackle them in this next season of Ask Wardy that begins this fall. Thanks uh, for being here. God bless you. And I'll talk to you again in a couple weeks. Bye-bye.